Hello there, I'm Dr. Janine Krauss. In my previous video, I talked about the causes of brain fog. Now I'm gonna talk about what you can do to wipe it out, get rid of it. Now, typically it may be a couple step process. Maybe it's not just one thing for you. Maybe there's a few things that can help you in this case. The idea is to go after the root cause of the brain fog versus trying to put a bunch of band-aids on it. Because if you've watched TV lately, you've probably seen the different commercials for the different supplements, very popular ones, start with the P that's been over and over on the commercials, but that's just a pandaid. Wouldn't you want to fix the problem that's causing the brain fog in the first place? I don't know about you, that's where I'm at. So that's why I'm here. All right, how to work on brain fog if we need some adaptogenic herbs. Adaptogenic herbs help us to adapt to stress. Of course, identifying your stress triggers, working on eliminating, but also working on dealing with them because sometimes we can't get out of our stressors. So adaptogenic herbs like ashwagandha, holy basil, rhodiola, Siberian ginseng, otherwise known as eleuthero. These are amazing herbs that can do wonders to help to calm you during the day, but can also help to get you laser focused. I personally like ashwagandha. I know it has a bad rap for thyroid folks, but you know what? Take it away from your meds, take it at night. It can be amazing to help you focus in the evening, but also carries on to the next day. So something to think about there. Holy basil, lovely for zenning during the day. Got a little bit of aggro in you, a little bit of like that switch gets flipped and you're just claws coming out. This is where you might consider something called Shisandra berry. Great, great Chinese herb that helps you to just soothe out any of that anger and irritability that might show up along the way. Now, Siberian ginseng, American ginseng, these are great adaptogenic herbs, especially if you're a little bit more on the tired end. Now, those of you who are tired but wired, rhodiola. It's been used since the times of the Vikings to help folks to recover from warrior stuff, right? Like when they're out and battling. So it's great for recovering from workouts, but it's also great for recovering from stressful situations that have been over and over and over again in your life. If you're super depleted and really struggling with brain fog, sometimes I'll have folks even look at the Chinese herb Romania root. That can be one that can really build you up and help you to adapt to life's stress. So that's kind of my breakdown for brain fog for those guys. Now, looking at your gut, as being a main cause for brain fog. A lot of folks will tell me like, hey doc, after lunch I'm toast, I can't think anymore. And I go, all right, great, what are you eating for lunch? Sometimes it's like a huge meal, sometimes it's not that much. Sometimes it's like I grabbed some chips, I grabbed a brownie uh, down at Starbucks when I got my coffee so I could just keep going. Well, you're gonna get some brain fog if you're overeating on carbs and your body can't keep up with it. Look at my insulin resistance videos. I'll tell you a little bit more about what's happening there. But if you can better break down your food, get those nutrients to your cells to make energy, guess what? You're not going to have as much brain fog. The other big thing is, is if you have too much yeast in the gut or too much bacteria, viruses, mold, you name it, you could use certain formulas bug regulators, as I call them, to help to balance things out. I'm not in the camp of going on huge kills in the gut. I've done that with folks. I've been in the game 15 years. And you know what? Unfortunately, with all these protocols to go kill, 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 I just don't see the great results in that. I see the concept beside behind it, but I'm seeing folks struggle. So usually what I have people do is considering something like a biofilm disruptor. That's silver. Combining nano silver with something, you know, one, one of the best ways to really regulate what's going on in the gut is hydrochloric acid. Sounds scary. Always check with your doc. Make sure you don't have an ulcer before you try this. But a little hydrochloric acid and digestive enzymes plus silver, guess what? You can work to regulate what's going on in your gut as well. Now, there are some certain herbs that can help. Garlic's amazing. Artemisinin is great for helping adjust things. Great antiviral as well. There's a bunch of different things out there. But I personally like the combination of silver, hydrochloric, and digestive enzymes. And if you're really digging deep and you really want to do a little bit of bug rearranging, there is a company out there that makes something called Viocidin. And I happen to like that one quite a bit to help. And it's, it's gentle enough, it's strong enough and gentle enough just to be enough to just rearrange things in the gut. But you have to think about this though. How do we end up with gut bugs all out of whack in the first place? What happened? 
we didn't sit down to enjoy our food. We were stressed when we ate. So over time, our digestive system became more and more weak. So you got to go to the source instead of keep putting band-aids on things. The other thing that you can think about in this gut bug regulation world is that a lot of times we have parasites. Parasites hold lots of things in our body, molds in particular. If you're struggling with mold, you want to be looking for what's going on in terms of parasites. If you're struggling with Lyme, Lyme's not your root cause issue. That's not the problem. Your problem is your immune system got hijacked along the way. And now all these things just kind of piled on top of each other in terms of invasive species. If you look at yourself much like a prairie, I know it sounds weird. Think about your gut like a prairie. <laughs> you know, there's things that grew there naturally and then there's things that came in, like weeds, noxious weeds coming into your prairie. That makes any sense to you at all? This is what I'm talking about in terms of things that shouldn't be in your gut. It's happening because you became stressed. Your immunity lowered. Then th things took a hold and affected your ability to fight off other things. So what are we getting here with the bug regulators, the silver, the biocide, and then there's a company called Cellcore. Highly recommend looking into Cellcore, especially for those of you that have parasites. And honestly, we all have parasites. Sounds gross, but truth of the matter, we do. Now, what's happening in the relation to brain fog here? Why am I talking about brain fog and parasites? They can mess with your gut microbiome. Your gut microbiome is a lot of your immunity. If that's off, guess what? You're going to have some issues with brain fog. You're going to have issues with neurochemical signaling between gut and brain. Your brain is down here in your belly. This is second brain. I know that sounds nuts. Something to think about. Check out some of my other videos on these things. All right. Bioidentical hormones and peptides. Those can be a game changer for ladies entering into menopause in the perimenopausal world and well into menopause. Why do I recommend bioidentical hormones? Ooh, isn't it scary? Isn't there some connection to their being, causing hormone, the, the causing cancer, the hormones causing cancer? No, there's no legitimate research out there that 100% identifies that bioidentical hormones cause cancer. You can fact check me on that one. Go look for it. Now, I recommend considering some estrogen to help you out because estrogen helps you with brain function as you get older. If your estrogen is declining because you are in perimenopause or menopause or beyond, guess what? Of course you're going to have brain fog because your brain needs more estrogen. Now, am I recommending using copious amounts of estrogen? No, monitor it, test it, make sure you're in the right range. Because yes, if you go out of range of your hormones, you can have some other issues. Now, highly recommend this if you're struggling with brain fog, though, for real. Get tested. Use something like the Dutch test to know how you metabolize hormones. Other big thing, peptides. Peptides can be a nice game changer and like a quick fix while you're working on getting the rest of this dialed in, while you're working on your stress, while you're working on your gut, while you're working on balancing your hormones, while you're working on your mobility, your circulation, your breathing. There is a particular peptide called Cerebropept that I love. I, la, 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 la. I love, and guess what? It's something you can get in a capsule form. You could take it to help get that brain dialed in. Phosphatidylserine, also game changer. So Cerebro, T-E-R-E-B-R-O, Pept. That's by Integrative Peptides. Or you could get something called, now oh, my brain just went, Foss, see, brain fog. Phosphatidyl serine, or you could get alpha GPC. I'll write that one down too. Alpha GPC has choline in it. Choline is rich in eggs. You can eat some eggs too if you're not afraid of cholesterol. You shouldn't necessarily be unless your cholesterol is like 400 plus. Then you got to investigate a little bit more. See if it's a hereditary thing. That's another tangent, but. Bioidentical hormones and peptides can be game changers for brain fog. Also looking at alpha GPC, which is choline, a choline supplement, cerebropep, which is a peptide supplement, phosphatidylserine, which is another type of amino acid that can help you to boost your brain function, especially, so phosphatidylserine is incredible 
incredibly helpful after brain injuries or car accidents where the brain fog is kicking in after those because of inflammation in the brain and the body. Now, if you had a brain injury years ago, you could still use phosphatidylserine. I like it for the concept of the leaky blood brain barrier. And this is another concept of how we get brain fog. Where does the leaky blood brain barrier come from? Chemical exposure, toxin exposure, mold toxin, those kind of things, biotoxin, which is all kinds of toxins in our food and in our environment that could cause brain fog. Now, how do we help with brain fog ultimately in terms of some basics about breathing and mobility? While most of us are over breathing, meaning we're short breathing, you could work on your breath work. There's a guy out there that has the website, The Oxygen Advantage. His name's Patrick McKeown. Check him out. He's got a book too, same title. You can learn how to breathe more effectively using your nose, not your mouth. So if you're a mouth breather, work on it. That might be causing your brain fog. The other big issue is mobility. Now this may sound kind of bizarro, but if your neck doesn't move well, your muscles are super tight, you might not be getting oxygen to your brain like you should. Same thing goes with tight jaw muscles. Now granted, those muscles are exterior here on your scalp, but if everything's on lockdown, you may be impeding your ability to get oxygen and move things like toxins out of the brain. That drainage of the lymphatics is what I'm talking about here, and the brain fog could literally be from toxic overload because we're not draining things. Kind of like I mentioned with the gut issues before, and if you've got some toxins coming from your food, coming from your environment, you might have them getting across your blood-brain barrier in your brain and building up in there. So the more that you can get your face, your neck, your jaw, all of this relaxed, the better you're going to be at having circulation to that brain of yours. And so that's why I'm talking about mobility here. So I've gone through all the things that I typically use to help folks with brain fog. And in particular, you want to be keeping in your mind that brain fog is not just something you want to give a, a Band-Aid supplement to. You want to get to the root of what is going on in this case. So make sure you watch my other video on brain fog and all the root causes of brain fog. Knock those suckers out one by one. Get your foundational health on point. Clean air, clean water, clean food, clean medicine, meaning clean herbs and supplements. Last but not least, mobility and circulation. Making sure you're getting that oxygen and nutrients to your brain, but also whatever's building up in the brain from toxins in your environment, etc., can also get out. So make Making sure your lymphatic system works as well. All right, I am Dr. Janine Krauss. Thanks for watching.